Reno and Lake Tahoe. He makes them laugh in Las Vegas and here in Atlantic City. But most especially, he makes them laugh in the Catskill Mountains. Please welcome Mal Z. Lawrence. Thank you, Freddie. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, boys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you boys. Nice try. Thank you, guys. Ah, the thrill of appearing 14 months on a hit show on Broadway near Schubert Alley, near Saudis. And tonight to be appearing at Harris and Brigantine Boulevard and Route 30 on a Thursday during the height of the off-season. This is the end of a career you're watching here, ladies and gentlemen. My next show will be in a jitney going to Absecon. Or Absecone. I never knew how to pronounce that place. I was in a little restaurant there, I said to the waitress, please help me out and tell me where I am and say it to me slowly. Where am I, in Absecon or Absecone? She said, you are in Burger King. <laughs> ah, but we're here at Harris in Atlantic City. Beautiful Atlantic City with the beautiful hotels, the beautiful boardwalk. Of course, you have to drive through Cambodia to get here. <laughs> well, where else are you gonna go for a holiday here? Where are you gonna go to Lancaster, Pennsylvania? To see Amish, Amish, Chumish, Chamish, Chamish people? Little Pennsylvania Dutch people hurt the years gewerte the hut the nish gemachen yet the schmutzig machen hut the bed gewandt and yes kehrkem. No, the schmuckaroos are coming here to look in off and misken yes kehrkem farkem through them yes and for. You understand Amish talk here? We drive two and a half hours to go to Lancaster, Pennsylvania to get on Route 30 to get right behind a horse and a buggy. Clippy clappy hot kick him into America. Forty Lincolns are backed up behind this horse and buggy. They want to kill this horse and buggy. But they're wonderful people, the Amish people. They don't use electricity, you know. No television, no telephones, no vibrators. How do you live without a vibrator? I guess one of them just stands still and the other one jumps up and down fast. Is it getting good for you to? Or go to Florida for excitement. There's where you get excitement in Florida. The excitement of driving down I-95 and seeing cars with no drivers go by, empty cars. Just little guys sitting like this here with four cushions under their tuchus. Moina, are in Del Rey Beach? Yeah. Even the malls are different in Florida. Like the malls in Florida, there's no video games in the malls in Florida blood pressure machine. <laughs> People walk around who can't remember their own name, but they know they're 130 over 82. And that's how you call to them. 130 over 82, your prescriptions are ready. <laughs> ah, but we're here in Atlantic City. City, I don't even think this is a city. I think this is a bus terminal down here. <laughs> Have you noticed you hardly see cars here anymore? You see limousines or buses. If you come here with a limousine and you lose, you go home by bus. <laughs> but the bus is the best way to go to Atlantic City. You get on the bus, you give them $9, they give you $18 in chips and $14 in quarters, a deli discount, two coupons for a buffet, one for a pickle, one for a tray. They give you a gold hat, a kazoo, they give you group cha-cha lessons on the bus. They give you a red ticket, you bring it back a month later, they give you back a blue ticket, they stamp the red ticket, give you a change of a quarter, you give them a buck and a half. They give you four tickets to a show that's not appearing here. And the bus gets down and the doors of the buses open up and these people come running, flying, moving, the speed of these people getting off. And these are gambling people getting off. They come walking off and limping off and hiking off with canes and crutches and they hand in the coupon and they get the roll of quarters and they drop the canes and they walk by themselves to that slot machine. I'm... Gambling in the Catskills, that's where we need gambling up in the Catskills. You see they had gambling up there now, the slot machines they would have there, the symbols on the slot machines. No cherries, no oranges, prunes. Yeah, you get three prunes in a row, and then you can go to the crap table. 
When they get gambling up there, they're gonna clean you out one way or another. <laughs> but even if they had gambling up there, that wouldn't be the big activity in the Catskill Mountains, no. The big activity up there, the big one, food, food. People freak away on food up there. People know there's eight meals a day, 10 meals a day. There's an early breakfast, a late breakfast, a walker's breakfast, a jogger's breakfast, a golfer's breakfast, a late lunch, an early lunch, hospitality room, coffee shop. People eat so much food up there, they have developed a new disease up there. Anorexia ponderosa. <laughs> people check into a hotel as a guest, they check out as cargo. Huge people are leaving. <laughs> on checkout day, they don't need bellhops on checkout day. Forklifts, roll those forklifts in there, boys. Put those prongs under the Epsteins. You got them, boy. Oh. No car, a flat-begged refrigerated truck will take them home. Oh. People check you into a hotel. The only thing on their mind, you know, is food. Uh, hi, hello, reservations. I have a reservation here. Yes, you do, sir. What room would you like? Dining room. <laughs> and the dining rooms are changing in the Catskills. The names of the waiters are changing up there. Do you remember the names of waiters years ago in the Catskills? We had names like... Mendel, oh, Yonkel, Yossel, Yechi, oh, Shaiki, Tati, Shmiel. Today it's Pablo, Puno, Chico, Carlos, Pedro, Jesus. Come here, Jesus. Hey, man, what you want? Lox, eggs, and onions. How about some gribbiness? You want gribbiness, my man? I got some nice Jewish cocaine for you, horseradish. I got strong horseradish for you, man. I give you two nice lines, a big straw. <laughs> and you gonna see the top of your head gonna get wet right away. Your eyes are gonna pop out your head. They're gonna turn around on the table. You gonna be looking at yourself, my man. You gonna pass wind from under your arm, sucker. The zip on your fly gonna play having a gila, cha-cha-cha. And there's no announcements for lunchtime up there. No, people know instinctively it's lunchtime. People know that it's lunchtime because they see that other people are beginning to move. <laughs> and everybody's walking to the dining room with the same uniform on, a warm-up suit. Everybody's wearing a warm-up suit. Have, have you seen the shapes of some people that wear warm-up suits? What? What sport are they warming up for, these people? Sumo wrestling is so big up there. Now you get to the dining room with those big doors. You ever see the size of the doors up there? It's like Kong is on the other side. Now you walk to your table, your chair, because the first meal you have at that table and chair, that is your table and chair for as long as you live. And now it's menu time at the table. No more talking here, menu time. No talking. Nobody wants to hear about the exciting nap you took this morning here. People who haven't read a newspaper in years are studying a menu. Uh, apple juice, an apple juice, who wants an apple juice? You want an apple juice, tomato, you want a tomato juice, an apple juice, a shab, you want a shab, a borscht, potato, no potato. Uh, you want a kasha and a varnishka. Uh, garni, what is garni? Do you ever eat garni? How about jellied yellow pike? <laughs> and the more you read from the menu, the less you know what you want. Now, people are totally confused. They look at each other at every table, they say the same thing. Uh, what are you gonna order? Maybe you want to share something? Why don't we split something, you and I? I'll have a half of yours, you'll have a half of mine, we'll have a half here, a half there, because I couldn't eat a whole one. <laughs> now, the waiter comes over, he doesn't know you don't know what you want. Yes, what would you like? Waiter, I, I don't eat like this at home. I don't, I don't eat like this. <laughs> and she's sitting on two chairs while she's saying this. Oh, I don't know, waiter, maybe a little tuna, a side dish, a little side of two little ball I'll just pick up. Do you have the chopped egg with the onion? Bring one of those to a little side, little ball. Oh, some, uh, 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 whitefish aside, just a side of whitefish. Just bring the side of Moby Dick out here. A uh, little eggplant, chop a little eggplant, chop a herring, chop a rubber tire, chop whatever you have there. Make a nice setup on the table. Get a big, lazy Susan out here, a big, lazy Susan and get an ox to walk around the table to pull, to pull. Mm -hmm. Sour cream, we love it, a big bowl, big bowl of sour cream. The Super Bowl, bring the Super Bowl out here. Bring a pump, get a pump out here. Pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it. Let it flow, let it drip, let there be waves of sour cream breaking, breaking over our heads. We'll go water skiing on sour cream, yes. You order Melba toast, put one piece under each shoe like this here. 
Then you take your napkin, you throw it to your waiter. Carlos, please pull me through the cream. I want to go skiing. And the biggest seller they have up there, the biggest seller are the Danishes, the little breakfast Danishes. People steal them. <laughs> Women, women call them for later, for later Danish. These are for later. No, these are not for now. We have for now, but these are for later. We'll have these with coffee November 23rd. <laughs> women have a plan. They come down in the morning with a bed sheet, a big bed She shakes it out in his lap. This young is sitting there with a white sheet. She's throwing Danishes inside like this here. Maya, take from their table. They don't want theirs, you take theirs, it's okay. Wop, wop. She'd put them in her purse, but it's full of rolls. <laughs> then you go away a year later, you open up a valise and a honeydew comes marching out of the valise. Uh, the Catskills are the best place to go for a weekend. And if you go up there for a weekend, of course you have to pack to go away. Ah, but that's the fun of the weekend, packing. Packing between a man and a woman, the joy, the happiness, the fun, the friction, the animosity, the hatred, the things that two people wanted to say to each other for months, now comes pouring out of our mouths, but we never say them to each other. Men usually talk into a drawer. I ask you, do I need this? He's questioning jockey shorts in a drawer, this guy. You see, men hate the pack to go away. When it comes time for a guy to pack to go away, we just slip into a coma. We, we just follow her all over the house in amazement here. Because women don't pack. Women choreograph this move. Women are dancing all around the house. Every light is on, every closet is open, every drawer is pulled out, every piece of luggage is hanging down. She has that hanger under her chin. I feel pretty. Everything she folds neatly with tissue paper in between and a little bottle of alcohol in case she has to perform an operation on the way up there. And this yachts is walking behind, packing, are you packing here or are you leaving me? How about the couch, are we taking the couch? Ladies, you have to admit you take more with you than you really need when you go away. When my wife and I go on a vacation, if they rob the house, who cares? We got everything with us. What am I gonna lose? Two curtain rods, maybe. <laughs> so when men pack to go away, we do it precision-like. We take exactly what we need. We go to the closet and figure this out. Now, let's see. Um, I'll be gone Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday, I'll wear the same thing that I drove up with on Friday. <laughs> Saturday, I'll wear a Friday shirt. I'll wash out a pair of underwear. I just need an envelope. I'm packed here already. <laughs> Honey, give me a stamp. I'm gonna mail my stuff up there. You see, we give ourselves away. Men don't even walk the same way after we get married. You see a married guy, you can tell right away. Single guy, you can tell right away. Single guys don't walk like married guys. You ever see single guys walk around the hotel here? Single guys don't even walk. Single guys are moving, looking, searching. These are warrior men, hunting men. Hey, hey, wanna, hey, wanna, hey, wanna, nooky, 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 wanna, hey, hey, honey, honey, nooky, nooky, wanna, look, wanna, honey. Bulls are running around. Marry guys just spot a mile away. Marry guys have this walk like they're going up a hill. They walk slowly. They have nowhere to go. They're in no rush. They already know who they're going to end up with. Because a man marries and then he mellows and then he ripens and then he rots. We can tell if we're married a single when we drive up to a nightclub or a, or a hotel. You ever see a single couple pull up? Single couples pull up in a clean, shiny car. Then the boy gets out of his side of the car and he runs around to the girl's side of the car, but the trip is too long, so he leaps over the trunk. The antenna touches him just right. <laughs> he runs to her door, he opens up a door, he helps her out of the car, he holds it tight to his body, they walk to the front door, he runs ahead, he opens up that door, she walks in like a queen, a princess. They get inside, he checks the code, they get to the table, he runs, he wants to make points for later, he holds her chair, boom, the chair is there. No interference, two points, touchdown, first and ten. Here's a married couple now driving up to a hotel. First of all, he gets out of the car and he walks like he came by himself, this fellow. 
He gets a block ahead of her. He gives her one of these. Huh? Why don't you open your door? Didn't you see how I did mine? I'm only kidding you, my darling. Give me your hand, honey. Hold on. Come on. Here we go. Hold on. Come on. Come on, Tiny. Try again, my little feather. No, put the rope around my waist. I'll pull. I'll lean. I'll take the seatbelt off. We're not going fishing here. We don't even talk to each other the same way after we get married. When we were single, we had talks and conversations with each other. Remember those talks early in the morning when you were single? Hello, little mommy, you the little mommy, Shana, daddy loving this the little baby, you the little sister, daddy love your eyes, I love your eyes, your nose, your lips, I love every little bit of a little mommy, you the little baby, daddy loving this the little, 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 little. We had things to say to each other. But now you get married, fellas, you get up early in the morning, you look at your wife, good morning, honey, I do anything you didn't like yet? Uh, Uh, want to shake hands, start the day even? You want me to say I'm sorry for the year now? I'll be home seven for dinner. Last night your supper was a salami sandwich and a Pepsi Cola. Thank God it was a catered affair. Because my wife hates to cook and I hate her cooking. She made a dish the other day look like something that should be coming out of my body, not going into my body. I gave some to my little dog. After he finished eating it, he licked his ass to get the taste out of his mouth. <laughs> I'm opening up to you and you're laughing at me now? Sexually, we change a great deal. Sex, sex, when I was single, it was mystical, it was magical, it was even frequent. But now they were married, it's a job, it's work, actual work for my wife now. End of the year, I send her a W-2 for. <laughs> Sexually, she hasn't earned enough to start an IRA account. <laughs> Bedtime is when you ladies shine, though. Bedtime when you put on those sexy outfits that you bought at Frederick's of Caldor. You know the outfit you girls love to wear at bedtime? That little printed house coat that you have with the pocket half torn down the side, a broken belt loop string hanging down, a pink shoe with a little fuzzy ball in the middle, creams all over your face, your arms, your legs, your body. He gives you a hug, four stories in the air. Yeah, but what about us though, huh girls? We really turn you on before we go to bed though, eh? Hey. When that guy walks into that bedroom, got that little belly hanging over the front there. He got the long box of drawers hanging down to the knees with little skinny stork feet sticking down there. And roll down socks he wears for house shoes. How do you ladies control yourselves? How can you not get hot by seeing this walk around your bedroom? With the red mark from the elastic around the waist over here and his T-shirt with little bullet holes in the front, the little ones. You're not getting this T-shirt. You're not polishing furniture with this T-shirt. Use your bloomers to polish furniture. Every shirt I wear smells from pledge. But I haven't had dust on my chest in four years, thank God. But isn't that the beautiful part of any marriage? We stay married to the same person, grow old together, and one day we stop and we look at each other and just laugh ourselves sick from happiness. <laughs> but that's the beautiful part of growing old together. You see, men don't grow old like women. Women don't age the way men do. Men don't age the way women do. Women get older, women bloom, they blossom, they get bigger, stronger, more gorgeous. Men, we get older, we get smaller, shorter, shriveled, softer. The nose gets bigger, our ears get bigger. Only one thing stays the same size and keeps pointing to the floor. In the old days, used to point to the ceiling. Only way that'll happen now is if I stand on my hands. It's a problem. Men get older. We have that problem. I think it's more than a problem. I think it's a disease. And why there are no telethons for this disease, I have no idea. What guy wouldn't send a check into this telethon? My wife would chip in her own money. 
True, they say it's a muscle, a love muscle, but we're gonna go into a gym to work it out. After all, they don't have a Nautilus putts pulling machine yet. And that's the beautiful part of doing this show. You come out, you do something, get a reaction from the people, which is wonderful. And yet some nights you come out here, you got good energy level, good timing, maybe even smoked a few babanya leaves on the way over. And you get very little response. One night in the Catskills, I was working for a convention of mummies. Mummy people up there, they, they didn't even rent rooms in the hotel. Wall space, they only wanted wall space. They wrapped each other in gauze and just leaned against the wall. Then they would go, mm, mm, buffet. Couldn't get through to these people. But that night, a gift came out of the heavens for me, a gift where I found I could do impressions of other people, and that saved my night, and I want to share it with you. And the first gift ever given to me, the first impression that I ever did, Mortimer Snurd, and I do my Mortimer Snurd for you. <laughs> this is a gift, ladies and gentlemen, this. Can we do another gift for you? How about the uh, Dean Martin gift would be a good one, Mike? Mm. Thank you. Oh, for once in my life, I got someone who needs me. Oh, someone I needed so long. Everybody loves somebody sometimes. Let me do my Johnny Mathis for you. I've worked with him many times. I was engaged to him for a year and a half, too. I... Always me to the mark. Created what we're here to do. I think his preparation H is in backwards or something, this guy squeezes all the time. Sylvester Stallone from that great movie Rocky. What a scene. I think it was Rocky 1 or Rocky 2 or Rocky I B B X I I I Z Z B B D and O, I think. He came home, he looked at his dog and said to the dog, Eh, eh what did you do today? I mean, what did you do? Did you bark and scratch your ear? What did you do today? Cliffhanger, he was better. He had the guy against the wall and said to him, yeah, What did you do today? Did you do what he did today? You, you didn't do that. This guy can act, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we'll do Dean Martin then. Thank you, Mike. Huh? I did him? I was in Florida too long, I think. Well, you see, you get older, you start to forget. Isn't that what they say? But that's not why I'm forgetting, because I'm getting older. It's just that I'm living longer. There's so much more to remember now. It's life that tells us we're getting older. You get good hints from life, don't you? Got a good hint the other day. I looked into a mirror, saw a 23-inch hair growing out of my ear. Well, I never checked my ears before. I had more hair in my ear than on top of my head. See, I used to wear a toupee at one time, but there was something wrong with the chemistry of my skin. When I used to perspire, the glue that was on the tape under the toupee, when it got hot and used to cook under there, it would melt the glue, and the glue would run down my forehead into my eye and glue up my eye, and then drip down my cheek to my mouth and glue up the side of my mouth. Every time I wore this toupee, I thought I was having a stroke. I said, hey, I don't care how good I happen to look in this toupee, you know what I mean? I, I want to see all of life, not just the left side over here. You know you're getting old when you're driving your car and your directional signals have been on for a week and a half. <laughs> men's room, tell me I'm getting older. I go to men's rooms now, I stand there, I wait, I whistle, I hum, I read the writing on the walls. Kids are coming in and out, splashing, flushing, zipping, going. I'm waiting, I'm hoping, I'm praying. I start saying to myself, <laughs> and it worked. The guy next to me went. Well, you see guys walk out of men's rooms, handsome debonair guys, cigarette in hand, little toilet tissue stuck to the heel of the shoe. And that round, wet little dot over there. You ever see that little wet bullet? And the older he gets, the bigger. Yeah, that's why older guys always walk like this here. Eh? They're still pissing. And smiling too. Because when you get older, you realize it's more important to go than to come. Mas importante, os. Let's do Anthony Newley for these people. What did you do today? I'll be me. 
For once I could say this is mine, you can't take it And long as I know I got love, I can make it For once in my life 